Well, good morning, beautiful. Welcome to a brand new day of life. Happy Tuesday, everybody. It's a Tuesday that feels a whole lot more like a Monday, doesn't it? It is time to wake up and put those feet on the floor, my friend. I'm so glad that you're meeting me here today. Our devotional I've titled, Only Today. In the book of Exodus, we read about a group of warriors and complainers. They were the Israelites, and goodness gracious, we can learn a lot from them. The Israelites had been led out of Egyptian captivity by Moses, and God had been with them each step of the way. You know, just like God has been with you each step of the way. I bet God has led you out of some pretty bad situations in the past, hasn't he? Places, people, and things which once held you captive no longer have a hold on you today. That was God, God's mercy and grace on you, and he led you out just as he did the Israelites. But just because God leads you out of the thing which once held you back doesn't mean it's going to be easy now. How quickly our celebrations turn into desperation and we get ourselves on this roller coaster of emotions. Yay! Oh, no. Yay again. Oh, no, I'm desperate again. You know what I mean. Maybe the ups and downs of life have you not wanting to even get on the ride anymore. You've decided to just sit it out. You sacrifice the potential highs because the lows simply aren't worth it anymore. Listen to me. You don't want that. God doesn't want that for you. Have enough faith to get back up and trust that if God led you out of that situation in the past, he can lead you out of the trouble you face today too. Get up, sister. Get up. As we continue the story of Moses and the Israelites in the book of Exodus, we read that they are wandering through the wilderness, worrying and complaining, worrying about what they will eat out here, complaining about how hard the journey is. But God had already provided exactly what they would need. Girl, don't you know God has already provided exactly what you will need too? He already knows. He already knows. He already knows. Nothing surprises God. At no time will you hear God say, whoa, I wasn't quite expecting this twist or turn. I wasn't prepared to handle this situation. No, not our God. Not the creator of the universe. He's got it already taken care of. So the Israelites are in the middle of nowhere, feeling stranded and hopeless, hungry and desperate. And God tells Moses he's going to bring them meat at night and bread in the morning. That sounds crazy. They're in the middle of nowhere. But the quail will fall all over the ground. And it did. Meat was everywhere for the people to eat. And the next morning, they woke up and there was a dew substance all over the ground like honey wafers. They called it manna from heaven, and everyone ate until they were full, and there was just enough. And they celebrated. God provided a way when there seemed to be no way. Let's read a little bit more about this. Exodus 16, 4, then the Lord said to Moses, look, I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. Each day the people can go out and pick up as much food as they need for the day. I will test them in this to see whether or not they follow my instructions. A little test. And that's what I love most about the story. God made the manna from heaven to only last for that day. They would have to trust that God would provide more for the next day. And many people tried to collect more than they needed and store it away for the next day. And overnight, it would rot and become horribly stinky and filled with maggots. Hmm. It kind of reminds me when we don't trust God, life gets stinky, doesn't it? 
Don't you see how God is providing manna, bread from heaven, every day for the Israelites out in the wilderness? How that's connected to the Lord's Prayer? Jesus was teaching us how to pray, and he said, pray like this. Give us this day our daily bread. Did you ever think about that? It's connected. Bread for this day, our daily bread. Not bread for tomorrow and next week, just today's bread. God, provide for today, and I'll trust you for tomorrow. I know that's not easy. But perhaps that's why the bottom keeps falling out of our plans. Maybe that's why everything we thought was going to happen is suddenly up in the air and uncertain. We were trying to gather bread for the whole week. We were trying to plan for next month and next year and create an elaborate plan of how life will be. And God giggles and says, nope, just today. I believe the biggest cause for stress and anxiety and depression is we get ahead of ourselves. We start worrying about things we can do nothing about today. I could seriously work myself into a full-on panic attack if I dwelled on all the uncertainties ahead for my family. If I dwelled on all the unfinished work, the pressures and responsibilities, my chest would feel heavy, my head would be spinning, and I might just lose my shoes. And that's always a choice for me. And it's always a choice for you. But you don't have to go down that path. You can pray as Jesus taught us, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. I'm counting on you for today, and I will trust you for tomorrow. Just as God provided just enough for the Israelites every day in the wilderness, God has provided just enough for you and I today. Really, you have what you need today, don't you? Now, maybe tomorrow or next week or next month, you're not real sure. But you have what you need today. And just as in our scripture for today, Exodus 16, 4, it says that God is going to test them to see whether or not they will follow his instructions. Maybe things are a bit of a mess and uncertain because you're being tested to see, will you follow the instructions? Will you be grateful for what God has given you today? Will you use it the best you can? And will you trust him for your tomorrow? Let us not whine and complain for more. Let us not worry ourselves into a tizzy thinking of what could happen tomorrow. Let us be grateful for the miraculous ways God has brought us out of everything in our past and know he will be faithful to bring us through whatever we may face today. (laughs) I woke up to manna from heaven today. Provision for today. Just for today. I bet you did too. May I lead you all in a prayer this morning. Let's thank God for just providing for us. Let's stop complaining. Let's stop whining. Let's stop worrying. (sighs) If you woke up overwhelmed, Take a big, deep breath and say, God, you've given me what I need for today. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds tomorrow. I'm not going to worry about it. I've got what I need today. May I lead you in prayer? Pray with me. God, good morning. Oh, God, how we thank you for this day. And I thank you for giving us our daily bread today, not just bread to eat, not just food, but God, you have given us exactly what we need for today. You have given us grace and mercy and strength and provision in every way for today. We thank you for it. God, forgive us for being greedy and so silly that we try to plan out the rest of our life and then we get so frustrated when our plans don't come through. Forgive us for worrying and complaining and stressing about things we have no business getting in the middle of anyway. Please forgive us. Please help us. 
Would you give us this day our daily bread? And we trust that you're going to show up again tomorrow and provide exactly what we need again tomorrow. If there's anyone listening that kind of has a stinky life right now, God, I pray that if it's because they've been trying to do this on their own, would you just convict them of that now and help them to just trust you, to remember how you've led them out of horrible situations in the past. And you'll do it again. And we trust you, God. God, I lift up each and every family to you. I especially lift up our big life sister, Trisha, to you. Um, spent the evening in the ER, and I'm sure she was so worried and scared with chest pain. And God, they sent her home. They can't find anything. And, and so she's looking for a new doctor. And I pray that you would just lead her to the right doctor, um, someone who will truly care and get to the bottom of this. And God, I pray that they would find um, just clear answers and simple solutions. God, I pray for her health and her strength. And God, we pray for our sister Tracy, who's going in for round five of chemo today. God, I thank you for the progress of killing the cancer in her body. I thank you for the strength that you are giving her. And I pray that you would be with her today as that chemo just continues to get harder as they move along. God, I pray that you would um, just give her strength and courage today. I pray for minimal nausea and um, God, that it would just be the smoothest one yet. I pray that you would put people in her path that she can bless. She is a strong woman that you are using in beautiful and mighty ways, and I thank you for her example. I pray your blessings, your provision, and your protection over each and every family represented here, each child, each husband, each wife, each mom, each marriage, each business, relationships. God, I just pray your blessings. Thank you again for this day of life and this day's provision. We're grateful. In the name of Jesus, amen. My friends, thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, by the way, the recording of this call is public, and I want you to share it. Please, if it's blessed you, maybe it will bless someone else. Click share, invite someone else to enjoy the daily devotionals with us. I love you wildly. Bye-bye.